All right, so I'm, I'm actually pretty curious to see how this turned out for her. Yeah, I mean, should we follow up now or at the end? Oh, we can follow up later. But uh, welcome back to our series called The Lies Our Parents Told Us. No, we're not calling out your parents. We're not calling out our parents. These are just things that were passed down from generation to generation that potentially turned out to be either inaccurate or harmful. Um, or I, good. Or good. You know, and I also think that there's a lot of ancient wisdom that maybe science hasn't proven yet, but things that our parents told us to do that ended up actually be really beneficial uh, because they have just generations of generations of information passed down. That being said, Neosporin is used across the world to try to treat everything from dry cracked lips to, to wound care. Um, people use it on their piercings. They use it on their toenails. They use it in between their toes. So Neosporin seems to be used ubiquitously across the world to treat all kinds of different skin conditions. And we're gonna be talking about whether or not we think it's beneficial. So we'll take a look at this antibiotic ointment, all things Neosporin. Here we go. Here we go. All right, so starting off, what is Neosporin? So Neosporin is a triple antibiotic. It's made up of three different antibiotics, one being Neomycin, two being Bacitracin, and three being Polymyxin B. All of these three ingredients have been shown to kill bacteria. So if you have a wound that's infected, that's why this was created. And then the other hacks developed with time. So let's talk about what could it potentially be beneficial for. So this triple antibiotic ointment has its primary function as a triple antibiotic, right? So not all antimicrobials are the same, not all antibacterials are the same, not all antibiotics are the same, but this one can be used for skin conditions such as hematigo, which is a very common staph infection, especially in younger individuals where it would get rid of some of the bacteria. Additionally, because of the polymyxin, and the good gram-negative coverage of this combination. It could be useful for something um, called a gram-negative toe web infection. I actually see it pretty commonly. I don't think people really know what this is, but it's this ulcerated macerated sore, especially in between your toes, and it's all polymicrobial, meaning not only is there probably gram-positive bacteria, there's also gram-negative bacteria. Then there's also sometimes yeast and fungus component that this would whiff on, but basically the long and short of it is, it's gonna be good for bacterial infections. Right, and even some infections like people get on their ears after cartilage piercings, you know, that polymyxin is also going to cover some of the bacteria that cause that as well. And so there's definitely utility in the antibacterial component of this medication. But that being said, the reason why if you're on dermatology, social media in any capacity, whether it be TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, you've probably heard of the horrors of Neosporin. And this all goes back to the risk benefit ratio here. There is high risk with this medication. And specifically, we talk about the neomycin component of it. So neomycin and bacitra are both very common allergens, neomycin being more of a common allergen, but over 10% of the population is allergic to this medication, which if you're applying it to areas like the lips or you know an infected area or a post-operative area and it's a high risk for allergy, those wounds are actually gonna get worse take longer to heal, and then you're actually gonna have a worse outcome. And so that's why it gets a really bad rap. Right, and not only is Neosporin directly allergenic, meaning that people are inherently allergic to it or develop allergies more commonly to it, it also does something called co-sensitization, where Neomycin is allergenic, but then it takes a, a structurally non-similar ingredient like Bacitracin, and it helps your body develop an allergy to that too. Even though those two compounds are completely unrelated, your body becomes more likely to become allergic to something else. So that's problematic. Then also, I think with the way that people use this ingredient for some of these home hacks, skin hacks, doesn't make a lot of sense because this is first and foremost an antibiotic. The only other useful thing in this would be the ointment vehicle. And you're just assuming that that's gonna be moisturizing, hydrating, because we see this in a lot of capacities, people use this for lips, wound care, acne, things like that. And it just doesn't make a lot of sense sometimes. Right. And the truth is when you look at the wound care literature, right? Cause we do a lot of surgeries on the skin and our goal is to, to cure the cancer that we're removing or whatever we're removing at the time, but also give you the best looking scar. And so we've done a lot of studies on post-operative care. So when we do a procedure, we look at how those wounds heal over time and what people are applying when they're, they're trying to heal those wounds. And Pretty much all the data suggests during the initial wound healing phase during that first two weeks that Vaseline or pure petrolatum outperforms Neosporin or any of these antibiotic creams kind of across the board, right? So you're applying this antibiotic to the skin and it's not having any additional benefit than just pure regular Vaseline, but it has increased risk with it now. So that's why you, most dermatologists are not recommending antibiotic ointments after surgery unless it's in a more high risk area. And in which case we usually prescribe a 
different type of topical antibiotic. Now, I guess bringing it back home to her video in particular, so she's talking about using this for what looks like prolesh or angular chelitis, where you have a breakdown of the skin in the corners of the mouth. Most commonly, this is just caused by pure irritation or that in a combination of yeast. So the antibiotic would do nothing for the yeast component. And as far as a barrier, again, it's a big assumption that the ointment is actually like a good ointment comparable to something like Vaseline or zinc oxide, which would both would probably be better options for protecting irritated skin. So it doesn't function well there either. So overall, this ingredient for that hack doesn't serve much of a purpose. I don't agree with that. I don't think it's a good role for this at all. Right, and so how would we then treat this perlesh or angular chelitis that we get along the way? So we said a moment ago, like the barrier creams, like a zinc oxide paste, yes, it leaves a white paste, but it's a great barrier. And so you can put that down to help prevent things like saliva from dripping down the nair. Because I'm, so that's like in your butt creams, by the way. To so be clear. Like blue Droz butt creams um, and anything like that. That's where you'd find that zinc oxide. Can I just say, I got like almost suspended from TikTok for showing Boudreaux's butt paste because there's a cartoon picture of a baby's butt on there. <laughs> Can I throw that there? So I don't know if we'll show the product or not. But yeah, exactly. This is a butt paste. It's a barrier paste. It's very effective. Um, but as we get older, the corners of the mouth turn down to a lot of structural changes and it becomes very common to get this angular chelitis as we get older. So you need a barrier cream there. And then also targeting yeast with different ingredients can help if there's a concomitant yeast component. You could target that. Like you can even use like your foot creams, like your terbinafin cream or your myconazole creams that you can get in the medicine aisle of any grocery store and use them at the corner of the mouth to help with that inflammation. Now I'm realizing we may not sound much more reputable than anybody else because she was saying using the amycin we've come up with a combination of butt and foot cream <laughs> as your solution. Don't do that use butt and foot cream instead. There you go. <laughs> Dr. Lee approved. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay but well, that's what we would use instead and then for post-op wound care like we said Vaseline is usually okay. If you did want to use an antibiotic, like say you got a scrape on the gravel and you said, okay, what do I want to do? Well, we say clean with soap and water and apply Vaseline. If you're concerned about get, it getting infected, we prefer polysporin to neomycin because polysporin, at least in the United States, removes that neomycin component and then it's just bacitracin and polymyxin. Now, that being said, bacitracin is high risk of allergy, not as high risk as neomycin, but it also carries this additional risk of more of an anaphylactic reaction. So, so neomycin causes contact allergy, which not to get too complicated here, is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. So to give you an idea of what that looks like, that's the type, same type of reaction that poison ivy causes. So neomycin gives you more like a poison ivy type rash. Whereas when you look at bacitracin, it can cause anaphylactic rashes is where like you actually get swelling and your skin swells and you get hives and your throat closes up. And so that is also kind of high risk, but the percentage of people that happens to is way, 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 way lower than the amount of people that get that poison ivy rash to neomycin. That was a lot. And it was also like, now I'm not sure anybody's going to go use this bacitracin. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not a good sell. I wasn't selling it well there at all. Uh, what what else do we have? We talked about the hypochlorous acid. I think that's oh, a good option gosh. for hypochlorous care. Acid is amazing. Like we talked about this before. I get so excited about this product. I like jumped in ahead of time, but it's amazing. It's extremely effective. It's antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial. The most amazing thing though, is it's like very gentle. You put it on a paper cut, you put it on an open wound, nothing, no irritation. It uh, is pH balanced. So as far as like cleansers, in my mind, it has replaced my hand sanitizer. I actually only carry hypochlorous acid now in my car and my laptop bag at work. It's just functionally very useful and inexpensive. Okay, there you go. Hypochlorous acid is the answer. So yeah, so I not approved, not, Doc, not doctorally approved. Don't use neomycin on the lips, high risk of allergy with very little limited benefit. If you want something to just moisturize the lips, you know, Vaseline or this new Vanny cream ointment I've been using, I've been really liking. Oh, well. find it. Talking about this all day here. So Vanny Cream Moisturizing Ointment. Uh, Vanny Cream is, is a brand that's basically, a, it's a sensitive skincare brand completely and entirely. So uh, definitely it's formerly the Vanny Ply Ointment, they say. So I've been liking this a lot for my lips. It's been doing really well. I've been having a lot of issues with my lips being irritated lately. So anyway, that being said, please like, comment, and subscribe, and then tell us what other hacks your parents told you or have been passed down from generation to generation that you'd like us to debunk. Thank you all so much for tuning in. All right, we appreciate you always.